Hello and welcome back. Today we're reacting to some more Kurzgesagt. Today we have You're a Dream of the Universe, According to Science. Now this is a topic that we haven't directly talked about on the channel before, I don't believe. But we've kind of alluded to and talked to the illusion of consciousness and free will and all that stuff. So I'm really interested to see how this ties in. Let's hop right in. Absolutely everything you think about yourself and the universe could be an illusion. True. As far as you know, you are real and exist in a universe that was born 14 billion years ago and that gave rise to galaxies, stars, the Earth, and finally you. I was about 9 or 10 years old when I first pondered to myself how I knew if anything other than myself was real. Because all I can experience is myself and interactions with other things and other people. So how do I know that they're real and not just a figment of my imagination? Yeah, young me was... <laughs> just kidding. But in all seriousness, it's something that I've been thinking about for a good portion of my life. And I don't know what to think about it, honestly. And I've never come to a clear conclusion there. However, I do believe that regardless of whether everything's real or it's just all in my head, what does that matter? Because you know what? This is the way it's always been for me. And let's just run with it. I'm having a good time. <laughs> Except maybe not. That kind of looks like you me. You actually not exist for real, but be the dream of a dead universe. You and everything you think exists. Crazy wow. as it sounds, this may be an unavoidable consequence of our best scientific theories about the universe. This animation! Okay, this is a bit much. Let's start at the beginning. We need to understand three concepts for this idea to make sense. One, the arrow of time. What distinguishes the past from the future? Mm -hmm. Put a drop of red ink into a glass of water, and you see the ink spread until it fills the container, but never the opposite. Colored water where ink spontaneously concentrates and becomes a drop at the surface again. Time always seems to flow in the direction in which the ink spreads. Mm -hmm. But if you take a microscope, all you will see will be a swarm of molecules colliding at random. But why? No rules, no forwards and backwards. Every individual motion that happens can Sorry. occur in re reverse. But we perceive a sort of arrow of time that makes things happen in one direction. How does this phenomenon occur? Well, this arrow of time is not actually fundamental, but a matter of probability. When ink molecules spread to fill a glass, there are many different slots of space they can occupy, and therefore many different possibilities to combine them. Mm -hmm. And just like your chances of winning the lottery grow the more tickets you have, the probability that ink molecules will end up filling the glass is much higher than the probability that they'll concentrate in just one spot. Very true. As the second law of thermodynamics states, Entropy will always increase. It's just more probabilistic. That's really all it is. <laughs> so it's not that the ink forming a drop again is forbidden by the laws of physics. It's just extremely unlikely. Mm -hmm. To see it, you'd have to wait about 10 to the power of 100 sextillion years. A one followed by 100 sextillion zeros. That would be cool, If though. you had this much time to spare, eventually, by pure random chance, you'd see a red blob form again. Actually, with enough time, you could see any shape forming. Like, for example, a small, red, soggy brain. Okay, let's move on to idea two. Two, the far future of the universe. Our universe was born 14 billion years ago in the Big Bang. It expanded and evolved to give rise to the myriads of galaxies and things. It's crazy, words, isn't it? The universe is kind of a glass of water with a lot of ink doing stuff. It has an arrow of time. But the universe is not a static glass. It seems to be getting bigger at an ever-increasing speed because of dark energy. Basically, everything in it is getting more and more diluted. In about 100 trillion years, the last star will die. Then, few interesting things will happen for the next few decillions, vantillions, and googles of years. I've always wondered that. We've talked about this briefly in some other videos recently. But civilizations that happen to be around during that time frame, the ones that are going to be the last civilizations in existence, that are making their living off of stealing energy off of black holes, 
that's going to be so far in the future and last for so long of a time period that I think it's pretty much a given that the knowledge that there once was a lit sky of stars and that there once was clouds of gases forming into stars and supernova and all of these wonderful, amazing things that we can observe today, there's going to be no memory of any of that. And that's kind of sad. They'll have a completely different theory of how the universe started. Or they'll think that it's been eternally static because that's what they observe. It's insane. Eventually, the universe will be a dark place fully dominated by dark energy, a rapidly expanding ball of pure space almost devoid of matter. You might think that this would lead to the ultimate death of everything, but dark energy has one last surprise for you. In a universe dominated by dark energy, space expands so dramatically that it creates a cosmic horizon around you, a border beyond which nothing will ever be able to reach you, not even light. Mm -hmm. So for every practical purpose, the universe has become a glass of finite size about 36 billion light years wide, surrounded by an impassable cosmic horizon. Such a universe glass is basically a giant black hole turned inside out. Oh. We know that due to quantum effects, all... That is a really cool analogy. A black hole turned inside out. That really gets the thoughts going there, doesn't it? Basically a giant black hole turned inside out. We know that due to quantum effects, all black holes emit a tiny amount of particles, a phenomenon known as Hawking radiation. And so does our inside out black hole. In the end, this radiation will fill the universe glass with particles again. At this point, so far in the future that giving you a number has no more meaning, We've reached the true final state. <laughs> the universe has now become a closed box full of particles at an extremely low but finite temperature. Hmm. And since they have a temperature, they undergo random motions. Or in other words, a glass filled with water and ink and an infinite amount of time ahead. Oh, yeah. Things are about to become interesting again. Three, typing monkeys and fake universes. <laughs> There's got to be a reference to... I can't remember who actually quoted this, but someone, somewhere, sometime, made the quote that if you give a monkey a typewriter in an infinite amount of time, eventually, he will type all of Shakespeare's novels, word for word. Chance is a crazy thing. <laughs> Technically true. But we're going to be waiting here longer than the lifetime of the universe waiting for that to happen. Long after there's no more monkeys. Eternity is a long, long time. So now, even the most extremely unlikely things can happen. Mm -hmm. The fluctuate. Like quantum fluctuations that create a new Big Bang? Just, you know, just, just throwing that out there. Particles are bumping into each other over and over and over again, creating every combination of particles that's possible. They're like a monkey typing at random on a typewriter. Almost all of the time it types gibberish. But with enough time, eventually it will write the first acts of Hamlet. Ah, and with see? even more time, the complete works of Eminem. If ink in our universe glass generates any random arrangements of particles, what could they be? Well, a spontaneous fluctuation could give rise to a planet, or to a galaxy, or even to a lot of them. Or so a maybe brain. our universe has already ended, and all we see around us is a pop-up universe. Not a universe that evolved from a Big Bang, but one that fluctuated into existence by pure chance. And that, like the drop of ink, will only exist for a while before dissolving again. Mm -hmm. Being random, pop-up universes could be similar to ours, but with funny glitches. In some of these universes, dinosaurs <laughs> are riding snails. In another, stars are made of blueberries. In another, like you're wearing a funny hat. Scientists in such universes wouldn't understand. In another, you're wearing a funny hat. Do they sell that hat? <laughs> I want to buy it. <laughs> Scientists in such universes wouldn't understand those glitches, so maybe the greatest mysteries of physics are just nonsense bugs of our pop-up universe. Yeah. But not all possible fluctuations of our dead universe have the same probability of occurring. Smaller fluctuations are much more probable than bigger ones. A planet is more likely than a galaxy. But you know what's even way more likely? A human brain. Ah! See, I said, I 
pulled it. That didn't make any sense. I said that earlier. What if it was a human brain? And what if that's us? Or me? And you're all part of my head. Are you real? Hmm. There's actually a name for that, isn't there? Isn't it called like a... A, a botsman brain? Or a boatsman brain? Or something like that, I think? Are you actually just a brain? You think, therefore, you exist. But what else do you truly know? In the end, your brain is just interpreting signals from your senses and mm -hmm. creating a world that you experience. So technically, you could be just your brain that thinks the world is real. And if we follow the logic of the ink in the universe class, in particular, you could be a disembodied brain that, just by chance, emerged in a dead universe with your complete set of knowledge and memories. This is a pretty bizarre idea, but if we do the maths, it's kind of pretty solid. Let's compare the number of brains inside bodies in a living universe with the number of naked brains in a dead universe. Let's go really big and imagine that a total of 100 quadrillion humans will live around Earth, and that the same amount of people will live around every star in the universe. Oh, if we okay. add this together, we get about 10 to the power of 41 brains inside bodies that will exist. However, in a dead universe that has had enough time to explore all possible fluctuations and that will exist forever, the number of naked brains that would emerge is, well, infinite. So the probability that you're a floating brain is not only vastly larger than the probability that you're a real human, it's so inconceivably larger that we can't even meaningfully quantify the difference. Now, here's where I disagree. Just a tiny bit, okay? Statistically, there may be a higher statistic, a higher chance that that's the case, that you are a naked brain, so to say. But that's taking into consideration a lot of conclusions that we're just jumping to. We're just assuming. We're making a lot of assumptions. One, that that's possible. Two, that the universe will last forever. And three, that these particles popping into existence from outside radiation is actually the case. Now, is it possible? Absolutely. It is quite possible. But it's also very possible that our understanding of the deep future is also not correct. I'd say that's more likely. Because the scope of our knowledge that we can directly observe compared to the grand scheme of things, especially deep time, is very limited. Very, very limited. And I'm also a big fan that the simpler explanation is usually the right one. So I think that it's a lot more likely that we are actually in existence, that there's actually a bunch of people, not just one person, me, imagining it. Because the one thing that I do know for sure is I'm here. I'm me, and I'm experiencing this. I know that for a fact. Now, you might say that you know that for a fact, too. But how do you know that me saying this isn't a figment of your imagination? Hmm? Maybe you're the one in the straitjacket in the proverbial padded room of the universe. <laughs> but I think that it's a lot more likely if we just go with the simpler explanations. The fact that all of our observations lead up to us existing we can perform experiments on what we've learned and what we observe, and we can have predictable outcomes, and that leads up to us being here. That's the more likely one. How do you compare a number to infinity? So, are you a floating brain that exists for one moment in time, then basically forever passes, and then you exist for another moment in time? Maybe not even in that order. Maybe your life happens backwards, and you just don't notice. Maybe you've lived trillions of times already. Are you the dream of a dead universe? Really? Like, really? Well, no. probably not. First of all, there are a few loopholes. For example, dark energy could behave completely differently from what we think today and lead us to another future. Or maybe our dead universe will be too motionless to allow the creation of brains, even with infinite time. Mm -hmm. Or maybe the universe will end up dying in another way. Our understanding of the cosmos doesn't have a solid enough foundation for anyone to worry if they're real or not. 
See, I swear I haven't seen this video yet. It just came out like yesterday. So I know that I didn't watch it like years ago or something. <laughs> Loopholes aside, if you were a fluctuating brain, all the laws of physics stored in your brain would have originated at random and shouldn't bear any relation to the real world. Mm -hmm. But we just used those laws to prove that you're a floating brain. So even if you believe that you are a floating brain, you'd have to admit that you have no good reason to believe that you are actually a floating brain. Hmm, okay, so <laughs> this hallucinatory trip might teach us something about our theories about the universe. But in the end, it's just a really weird exercise in what you can do with physics. Mm -hmm. An exercise of what brains and bodies are able to think about. So don't worry, you're not a dream of the dead universe. Probably. Probably. Ah! At Kurzgesagt, we love discussing topics like Boltzmann brains because we're convinced Boltzmann. that taking science and philosophy seriously is really important for having a positive impact on the world. We're lucky because this is our job. A boatsman brain. I was very close. Very close. What did I say? A botsman brain? Eh, whatever. It still counts. You'd, if you were a teacher, you'd at least give me partial credit, right? <laughs> Consciousness is weird, man. <laughs> I think the things that we can imagine are possibly weirder than what could actually exist. Maybe. I don't know. But, yeah, it's weird, some of the stuff that we come up with. I guess technically feasible, but no, I, I really don't buy that. But it's a very interesting concept, though, right? How do we know that anything other than us actually exists? We just don't. How do we ever prove that? How do we ever prove... That our interactions with our environment aren't all in our head. You hear stories about people sometimes going into coma for years and years, and in their coma dreams, actually living out entire lives, having families, getting married, having kids, getting promoted at work, starting a business. And then they come out of coma and they're just they're so confused because they've lived this entire lifespan in their coma dreams. If that's possible, albeit not common, but possible, it's been reported many numerous times, what else is possible in that regards? How can we trust ourselves in this crazy, crazy universe? Hmm. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you, and I hope that you have a wonderful day.